enough to be uh, collectively, <laughs> I want to say just duplicated, but expanded. That's why he, he calls us, he's, he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters if you're born again, all right? Oftentimes, the Jesus that we get today, even though I know I like to pick on some of you guys that like the, you know, like the Chosen series, amen? I like to watch that. Y'all, y'all binge watch that. <laughs> y'all think, y'all think uh, Jesus is, you know, just basically come to me all, you know, with nice little soft, soft hands. Um, no, that's not really the Jesus of the Bible. That's not the Jesus of the Word of God. The Jesus that I know says some things that's really hard for us to take. The Jesus that I know, according to the Word, is telling us that there are places and there are consequences for our actions. And that for us to understand that there is a real spiritual battle happening right now as we speak. That you may think that you're just the only thing that's here, but you're not. God has created both a seen and an unseen. And when he died on the cross and resurrected, he took care of two sides of the coin. In the seen, he overcame sin and death. That's what we deal with. Nobody wants to die and all of us sin. Amen? All of us have fallen short. On the, other scene, on the other side of the coin, in the unseen, he's dealt with entities, spiritual principalities and powers and evil spirits that hate your guts. Why? Because you are made out of all creation image bearers of God. That means God had decided that mankind would be in fellowship and relationship with him. But something happened to us. Something happened to us. We decided to follow our way instead of God's way. We started to actually follow what they did, and that's called rebellion. They're rebellious spirits. And the Bible says that till this day, right now, if you're living a life contrary to holiness, contrary to what the word of God says, according to the flesh, according to your sinful nature, it says that you are being influenced by spirits. That's what the Word of God says. It's saying that you are making decisions, and you're responsible for those decisions, but something is influencing your mind and your hearts. Even to the point where Paul said that, I don't even war against flesh and blood. We're not even wrestling against human beings. He said we're wrestling against spiritual forces in an unseen realm that are complete enemies to us. They latch on to our pride. They latch on to our depression. They latch on to our anger, our frustration. You think your thoughts are your own, they're not. I'm gonna tell you right now. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't have an intimate relationship with them, and I mean being born again, as what Jesus said, he spoke of a kingdom that was coming. And he declared to the people, he said to repent. That means turn away from whatever you're doing right now and turn to him. That doesn't mean turn to God and then live in sin. He's saying you don't want a life of sin anymore. You want a life in God. And that is contrary to popular belief. That the God of this Bible, the God of the word, the living word, is dealing with our sin. Absolutely. He wants you to know that in order to be in this kingdom, you got to be born again. In order to be a part of this family, you got to really be in it. You don't attend a church, <laughs> you don't attend a building. You got to be in Christ Jesus. You got to be born again. And you can't make up how you become born again. You got to follow the words of the Master. Because Jesus is basically saying it like this. You can either let sin run your life or him run your life. You can either call him not just Savior, but also Lord. He's got to be master. Because the Bible says whatever you obey, that is your master. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff y'all obey, and it ain't God. And so I'm going to speak very authentic, very straightforward with you all here. 
the healing and the deliverance and that love that you actually need won't come from anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where your true freedom and liberty is in. Is understanding that the only way to be in his kingdom, the only way to be saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not just saying out of his mouth because he said many, many will say. He said there are many that, that speak of me. He said, but their hearts are far from me. We don't want to give the, the Lord lip service. And he said it so many times. Don't call me Lord, Lord, if you don't actually do what I tell you to do. If you don't actually listen to the word of God. When Jesus was showing me this, he wants you all to know that if you're going to be a part of this family, you got to obey his words. You can't cherry pick what Jesus says. You can't create a Jesus that, that you're going to watch on TV. You got to actually absorb the truth of what he's saying. And so as you see these scriptures, let it speak to your soul because that's what it was designed for. Not for your mind, but for your soul. Because you, every single person here is a soul. You're inside of this earth suit we call a body. Amen? How do I know that? The Bible says, when Jeremiah was complaining, <laughs> or he was weeping to the Lord, the prophet Jeremiah. And he said, Lord, he said, I'm too young, basically, to be able to do this task. And God said, I knew you. Before you were created in your mother's womb. In fact, he actually said, I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb. So not one, whatever you want to call it, zygote, cell, fetus, whatever you want. It's a life and it's on purpose. Amen? Amen. Everything God does on purpose. He said it had intention. I knew you. Where were you before you were in this human shell? God's saying, I already knew you. Now, you got to discover who you are, and that's only going through Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to play any other ways around it. Jesus made it very simple. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. He's basically saying, every other way ain't no way. He said, there's no square circles here. He said, I am the one who overcame sin and death. So now when you're joined to me, when you're born again, you overcome sin and death. Because I resurrect and live forever, now you can resurrect and live forever. But you got to be born again. Jesus never even told us to actually become Christians. Oh, y'all surprised. Never even mentioned it. It's an honor to be called that. But he actually called us to be born again and to make disciples of every single nation. That God would create from all ethnicities one new man, a spiritual man. And I'm telling you guys right now, there are souls right now crying out under the earth. Yeah, I said it, under the earth. They wish, they wish they have another opportunity to come back here. In fact, Lazarus and the rich man spoke of a parable, spoke of an actual situation where there was a rich man, lived his life, did what he wanted to do. And Lazarus was the poor one and still gave his alms to God. He basically lived a life in suffering. And when they both died, the rich man actually ended up in Hades, basically hell. And the poor man ended up in what they call Abraham's bosom, which is basically paradise. So before Christ overcame the underworld, because that's, that's what it says there, and before he took paradise into the third heaven, um, the souls of all humanity were placed in either paradise or in Hades, which is we know as of now, Gehenna or hell, which is a containment center 
In fact, Jesus said that hell was not even prepared for mankind and souls. But it was actually prepared for the devil and his angels. But what happened? Why did hell enlarge itself? Because we follow Satan's rules. Focus on self, not on Jesus. Focus on our own way and not God's way. And so I'm coming at you guys with a very sober message right now. If you're not right with God, get right with God now. Just don't receive a prayer. Receive full healing and deliverance. Get into the kingdom of God. Get born again. Become a part of the family of God. This is not a denomination. That stuff ain't biblical. I know we like to play that stuff, but that ain't biblical, y'all. On the day of Pentecost, they wasn't like, you a Baptist? You a Catholic? You a... Is looking at them like, no, we just serve Jesus. Amen. What you talking about? We muddied this stuff up. God wants you to become born again and get right with him fully. Understand that there's an old life that needs to go down in that grave. What's the grave? Baptism. You need to get baptized into Christ. You die with him. You die with him. You rise with him. I didn't make up the rules. I didn't make up the standards. Christ Jesus did. What's more urgent is that you know that hell is a real place. It's not a figment of your imagination. In fact, at the end of the age, Jesus himself says that he will take hell and throw it into the lake of fire. And it says that anyone that is not born again of water and spirit that means you've repented, you were baptized in the authority, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you receive the Holy Ghost. He's saying, if you're not written in the Lamb's book of life, you will be thrown into the lake of fire. God is trying to give us a reality. What's happening here is you guys are thinking you're just living your life, just however. But God has set this thing up for you to understand there's two realities that's happening at the same time. While you're in this body, your soul is trying to figure out what's really happening. And God is trying to let you know there is an unseen world that I created that came before this one. And Jesus knew already what was on the scene. And when we look through these scriptures, I pray that God opens your eyes up and opens your soul to understand what's really happening here. There are many people that have, uh, they call it, near-death experiences. They either saw a light or they went into a lot of darkness. And I even got, a, got to speak to another man of God before he was a man of God. He was 16 years old, and he got hit by a car. And I remember him telling me, we were sharing the gospel in IHOP down in San Diego, going to this conference thing. But he opened up about how he lost his life, how he died. And came back to life. And I was just like, whoa, what happened? And so he tells me, tells all of us, and his mom starts to tell us too, how she remembers getting this phone call from the CHP saying, hey, I think I hit your son. Hey, I think I hit your son. And so she comes running out of the house, trying to get to the, to the scene. And then she shows up just to a pool of blood. And when I hear both sides of the story, I see something very interesting and very unique and also consistent with the scriptures. She says, as I walk up to my son, 16 years old, I said, what were you doing? I was asking him a question. I'm not going to reveal his name, but I said, what were you doing right before? He was just like, man, I was just listening to my Walkman. I was listening to Tupac. I was like, yeah, it's the 90s. He was to Tupac. Just trying to do his thing, trying to thug out. Went across the street, boom! Didn't see that coming. You know what he said right before he got hit? He saw three shadowy figures go right by him. And he said that five days before that, he saw several shadowy, shadowy figures in his, in his room. It spooked, tripped them out, but he didn't say nothing to his mom. It's almost like they knew something was up. They're like, oh, yeah, we're we getting ready. We're getting ready to take him down. 
So you guys don't understand this. It's, it's, it's not as... <laughs> I don't want you guys to get caught up too much in this illusion. Okay? If you don't navigate with the truth of Christ in that word, you're going to get lost very quickly. This is not TED Talks. This is not motivational speeches. This is the kingdom of God. God wants you guys to understand there's something that's happening here that they on the other side don't want you to know. They don't want you to know why God created man the way he created. Because it was special. As she walks up to her son and she sees a pool of blood, I'm telling you, nothing worse than a mother seeing their own. About to go. Some of y'all will completely lose it. No way you know how to respond. She said as she picked up his body, or was grabbing his body, she quoted the scriptures over. And she said her son's name, and she said, he shall not die, but he shall live. Instantly, he comes back to life. Somebody about a mother's prayer, amen? He said during that moment, between seeing the three shadowy figures and getting hit, he said he remembers getting pulled down into the earth, into the earth, going into this pit just quickly. And as he looked around, he's screaming, and he's seeing these skeletal angels tear off his flesh and biting at him and laughing the whole time, bringing him down. He said then he saw a light come, and it pulled him out. He knew instantly when he listened to his, his mom, he said, that was you. He said, that was God. He said, your prayers. They intervened. The Bible says that the passionate prayers, the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Why am I sharing this with you guys here? Because this is a reality that all of us have to understand. That you can get prayer from anxiety, from fear. But you know what the Bible says? Fear is not an emotion. It says the spirit. He said it's not a spirit of heaviness or depression. Right? He says, how do we exchange those things? How do we grasp those concepts? God wants us to open our eyes right now. That they are trying to derail every single person to not accept the truth of Christ Jesus. That we have to be born again. We have to get our lives right with God. We can't keep playing games with Him. We show up to church and we do that thing and we come together and there's protocols and all that stuff. But you know, instead of showing up somewhere, how about you start being something? Be the body of Christ. Be actually what you are called to be. Because Jesus is not playing any games, y'all. Let's look at what he says. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man of God. says, Jesus replied, I assure you that no one can enter. Everybody say enter. Amen. The kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. He said humans can rep reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Being born from above. He says, so don't be surprised when I say you must be, meaning in non-optional, born again. Jesus was talking to the disciples, sharing even with the Pharisees a little bit of knowledge of what's really happening in the spiritual. And he starts telling them about when you come to God, understand that your father will provide if you come at him correctly. He said, truly, if he recognizes you at that. Because he starts to point out something. I, I love what Jesus just keeps it real, all right? When he doesn't work around the angles like we have to do, he's like, oh, let's pity Pat. Let's just be nice. No, Jesus is going to be direct about it. Some of us here think we're good people, right? 
I hope you don't. Because you know what Jesus said about good people? He said none exist. <laughs> he says only good is God. Everybody. Every single person. It's either, it's either one or two things. You telling the truth and Jesus is lying. Now, I wouldn't dare even say that Jesus is lying. Amen? He said God cannot lie. So he, he points something out for us when we go approach the Heavenly Father. He says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find it. Keep on knocking and the door will be open for you. He said, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, everybody say seeks, seeks. finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. He said, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, he said, do you give them a stone instead? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> he says, or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? He said, of course not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's something going on here, man of God. Let me check it. It says, so if you sinful, evil people know how to give good gifts. Okay, wait a second. Why would Jesus call us that? Guys, prior to the cross, prior to becoming born again, you are that. That is your status. We don't become anything new unless Christ Jesus makes it that way. Amen? You can't do nothing about that except for respond to this good news. He says, you being evil, give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? There are some things that God will bestow upon you because of his goodness, not of yours. Amen? And I, and I want you guys to be authentic to the Lord tonight about the things that you're asking from him. The things that you know that you really need to deal with. If it's pride, if it's rejection, if it's healing from trauma, God will give these things to you. But remember, he wants, he wants to be your Lord, not just your Savior. He wants all of you. So there are many things that we say, God, I'm giving you this part. I've had conversations with many men <laughs> and women. I remember a conversation I was having with another brother, and I brought something up. And he said, ooh, uh, that's a touchy subject. And I said, ooh, I said, you know, God want to touch all over that. <laughs> Jesus want all that. All the areas of your corners, that stuff you like to tuck back and not talk about. Because let's be honest. What you do behind the scenes is really you. And God wants to deal with that. Your thought life is not just your own. You're being influenced by things. The Spirit of God has to purge these things out. But you got to be a willing vessel. you got to be willing to deal with those things that are troubling you. So when you go to God, understand that he does do good things. Now he speaks of a tree. <laughs> I love how the Lord compares this. He says, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. He said, you can identify them by their fruit. Everybody say fruit. fruit. He said, that is by the way they act. How they portray themselves, he said, you can really identify. Now, I know our slang is what? Don't judge a book by its cover. Slow your roll. Jesus is letting you know right out the gate. The seed or the fruit is the manifestation of what's planted in. Amen? We don't plant, you know, we got a mango tree and then come out with apples. It's not going to happen. Amen? So he said, can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? He said, a good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. He said, a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit, wait a second, is chopped down 
and thrown into the fire. Jesus had to speak a way for them to understand it. But he was talking deeper than that, y'all. Because as we read along, Jesus was talking about there's a real fire that's coming. There's a real fire that's actually being turned up right now. And I'm not talking in uh, analogies here. He's talking in reality. And the things that are troubling humanity, they are destined for that fire. Do you understand? And they hate God so much for that. So because they hate God so much, guess what they do? They want to mess with you. And the easiest access they have to mess with you is unforgiveness. That is when you open up the door. Because Christ said, if you don't forgive those that have offended you, he said, I can't forgive. In Colossians, it says, so that Christ forgave us, we must, meaning non-optional, forgive others. Amen? That is how we demonstrate his love. So he's telling us there's somewhere, not just the kingdom of God, <laughs> but the results of when we reject his kingdom, when we reject the son. That he's running a theocracy, not a democracy, amen? Where Jesus is king and he makes the rules. And if you reject that relationship, if you reject becoming born again and following his word, not cherry picking what the scriptures say, but following the entire word of God. And saying, God, I don't understand this all, but Lord, I trust you and I need your help. I need you to purge some things out of my life. I need you to deal with my insecurities. I need you to deal with my fears, Lord. Many of us put our identity literally in the world, and God is saying, I'm pulling you out of darkness, not for you to stay in it. Jesus goes on and says, you can identify a tree by its fruit. So you can identify people by their what? Everybody say actions. actions. You say, oh, don't judge. God said to judge in righteousness. That's the truth. He just said, you need to examine yourself before you do that, though. <laughs> but he said you can. He said, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. There's a lot of people like that, professing Christians. I used to be 18, 19 years ago before I became truly born again, filled with God's spirit, baptized in Jesus' name, the whole nine. I was the same guy. I'd be like that right at the club. Tell them to order. Say, hey, yeah, put that, put that Hennessy in that glass. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah. If somebody walked to me and said, are you a disciple? Different story. I go, oh, I don't necessarily know what that means, but <laughs> do you follow Jesus? Do you look like Jesus? Does your life look like Christ? Because that's why they started getting dubbed the name Christians. Not because it was a religion, but it was truly a relationship with the Father. It was a family. It still is a family, a spiritual family. But you can play the whole religious stuff and talk the talk. Well, I've been raised in the church. Oh, you know. Okay, listen to me. There's a lot of people raised in the church, <laughs> raised in the building, raised in the community, raised in the culture. But God is saying the kingdom is over that culture. The kingdom is beyond that. And every soul has to attest for the things that we said, the things that we did in this body. So he says, you're not getting into this kingdom. Amen? Unless you do what? Everybody say the will. the will. The will of my Father in heaven will enter. So you say, oh, it's not works-based. Listen to me. God is saying, I expect you to be doing something. Don't throw in and assert any theology here. What does the word of God say? Jesus is trying to make it very plain and simple. Yes, God has justified you. Justification, you're born again because of his blood, because of him overcoming sin and death that you couldn't do. None of us could do it. Amen? 
But he says, you are saved, you will be saved, amen, and you are being saved. That's sanctification. That is where a lot of us run into a brick wall. Because we think that God's grace is so grace, so great, and so mighty, that we can live however we want to live. That's not the truth. He said the truth shall make you free. And he's trying to tell us something right now. He said, if you're doing the will of my father, if you're being sanctified, if being led by the spirit, you will not fulfill the, the deeds of the flesh. But he tells us something that will happen if we continue in a life of sin. He said, on judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. Prophesied, preached. Cast out demons in your name. Wow. And perform many miracles in your name, in your authority. And look what Jesus says. He said, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break. Everybody say break. God's laws. Another translation says workers of iniquity. Iniquity is hidden sin. Breaking God's law is his spiritual laws. When we sin willfully, having the knowledge of what we're doing, and even being ignorant, because I'm going to be honest with you, a law is a law whether you like it or not. If somebody ever went to court, you'd be like, oh, I didn't know that judge. Judge like, I don't care if you didn't know it or not. The law still applies regardless of you being ignorant. See, this is the hard thing. The enemy is putting so much in your face. Y'all TikTok, y'all social media, blah, 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 all this stuff flooding your mind. It's an illusion. I'm trying to get you off the fact that this life here is temporary, y'all. He said your life is just a vapor. So God is saying you need to now make sure that you know the one. Know the one that lasts forever, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God wants you to operate in eternity with him. He does. That's why he puts it on preachers' hearts like me to say, hey, tell them the real. Forget all that motivational speech stuff. You're like, God's going to you get your blessing right around the corner. And then you get infatuated with blessings and not the blesser. You focus on the creation, not the creator. God is done with it. He's got to speak to your soul. You are living in a temporary world. The Bible says that set your mind on the realities of heaven. Set them. Rewire them now. How can you do that? you got to be in the kingdom. you got to be born again first. And what God does is as his spirit starts to renew your mind, recalibrate how you think. Because we are three. Body, soul, spirit. And God's spirit wants to operate in us, not in the other spirit. And that's the issue we come tonight. Many people don't know that they're dealing with stuff spiritually. There is a spirit realm. The Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. You wonder why you get those thoughts. Speaking to somebody, I remember them telling me, and I just I saw them in the spirit. I said, hey, I saw you literally driving a car. <laughs> How general, right? But I said, no, but I saw the thought that came to your mind. They said, go and turn. Turn and just crash. Kill yourself right now. I said, you get that. Every time you go to this certain spot, just kill yourself. Turn right there. You'd be like, what is that? These are evil things that are out there that literally want to derail you from Meeting the Lord. And not operating in that place. So Jesus tells these people, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. He talks about sin here, Jesus. And he says, if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Jesus is like, wow, like people are looking at the machete or something like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I don't know about that. He said, it's better to enter eternal life with only one foot than to be thrown into hell. Everybody say hell. Yeah. He says, with two feet. Jesus is not making stuff up. You know, if you go on Google and you look up how many times Jesus speaks about love, it's so much more or less 
than hell. He speaks about hell way more. Why is that? What is Jesus actually trying to let us know about something? That this life is fragile. One moment, we think we got it all together. We hop in a car. I'm going to go on the 78. You're either under the mercies of God. Everybody acting like we're the best drivers out there. Come on. I know some of y'all ain't. <laughs> y'all be cutting people off real quick. They be like, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> be like, did that say a 65? Oh, I thought I said 95. Like, oh, no, you definitely got to get new glasses. Help them, Lord. Be like, Lord, please save me. <laughs> you see the sirens in the back. Please save me. Like, don't, don't go past the limit, amen? He said, you'll be thrown into hell with two feet if you continue in sin. He said, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it. It's better, everybody say, it's better, <laughs> to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. He's saying, deal with your sin. Guys, your sin is, is, is the doorway to demonic influence. That's what they attach to. You think it's just like, oh, it's just, I just, yeah, maybe you had history. Maybe family members did the occult. Maybe you had some witchcraft. Still sin. Maybe you dibble dabbled a little bit. Right? You're like, I love Jesus. I'm a Pisces too. Woo! Wait a second. What you doing? You can't serve two masters? Y'all do realize uh, Jesus is not on that horoscope stuff, right? I know we get into it like, oh, what's your, what's your birthday? What's your range? We'd be looking at our fortune cookies all day, huh? Be like, oh, yeah, maybe. You can eat the cookie, just throw away the message. But God is trying to get us to understand something. There's a reason why these things are happening in this world. It's to pull you down to the pit. That place is real, y'all. I don't even want to tell you some of the stories and some of the things I've heard. But even what God has described alone in his word should give you enough sense to say, I don't want to be there. I want to be in the arms of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to make sure that I know that I know that I'm living for him and not playing this whole twister kind of thing. How one foot in the world, one foot with God. It's not how it works. Or we straddle the fence. As the old, old timers used to say. But you know what they say? They say that when you hold onto the fence, the devil owns it. So he's telling us here, we need to avoid this. He said, in hell, the maggots never die. And the fire never goes out. He said, for everyone will be tested with fire. Why well, do I want to bring that up right now for you guys? Jesus wants to make sure you understand the reality. The reality that if you do not choose him, choose to live for him. That there's another place that your soul has to go to. And God will test everything with fire. What you did. If it makes it through the fire, it counts. If it doesn't make it through the fire, it ain't got nothing to do with anything. And I don't want anybody here to think that walking with Christ is just showing up to a building. Amen? It is living for him every day of your life, eternally. We need to be looking for his coming. And he speaks at the end. He says, this is the way it will be in the end of the world. He said, the angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous. Throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. When I read that, it tells me utter despair. Christ is trying to warn us to not take for granted what he did on the cross. 
to not take for granted his resurrection, to not take for granted the time you even have right now, that if you are living for him, continue on. You need to help humble yourself. Don't hide your sins. Be open about it. Say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Sister, brother, I need help in this area of my life. I don't want God to, to, to deal with me like this. Because when we read the word and not listen to a bunch of philosophies or theology, God is making it very clear that he wants to empower you with his supernatural grace that comes from his spirit. And that's for you to live right. He wants you to live holy and set apart lives for him. Where there's no more confusion of why you're dealing with depression, why you're dealing with anxiety, why are you dealing with these things. So I want you guys to understand, this is the time where you become fully open to Christ. Be fully open to what he's going to do for you. Because if you choose any other way, guys, it's not going to work out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can all stand. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things that troubled me the most was that the current state of what we call Christianity is absorbed with absorbed with self what can I get out of the ministry what can I get out of um, what can I get out of this congregation instead of actually just going to the Lord and saying Lord what do you want from me that poses a whole different thing because now, then now that puts Christ in the driver's seat He's saying, God, my life truly is not my own. And it's so important right now for us to get that. I'm going to pray for those that need healing and dealing with things mentally and emotional pain or even psychological things. Because I heard some things as I was going here praying in the spirit that God was going to set you, you guys free for some stuff. But more than anything, it's just being ready to say, God, I want you to take over now. <laughs> I don't want to do it my way. I truly want to do it the way that you've called me to do it. Whatever that looks like. Now, I'm trying to give us an opportunity to get that. We come here for different reasons, but I'm going to come here and tell you what the Spirit of God is telling me. He's going to heal you. He's going to offer provision and different things like that and wisdom down the road as you trust him. But the key is, is are you really in this like that? Because you can say it, but then your life shows something else. God wants you to make sure right now, right now, that you're in his kingdom If you have not turned away from your old life and you're like, look, I understand. I've seen church. I understand. I do believe in God. That's awesome. Because a lot of people believe in God, right? But they're, they're not born again. Christ wants you to follow his instructions and obey his ways for the rest of your life. So if you're unsure of that, if you're like, God, I'm really, I'm really ready to give it all to you right now. If that's you, if that is you, where you're at, you can either raise your hand or you can come forward. We can pray for you. We can educate you on these things, all right? This is really important. This is about full surrender here. This is not about hiding. This is about saying, God, I want everything that you have for me. Now, if 
if you have not gotten baptized, or if you got baptized, you don't understand what it was all about. We, we stress the early church and how they became born again. When Jesus resurrected and ascended on high, the Bible says that he led captive many, but he sent gifts unto men. And one of those gifts was the Holy Spirit. And he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the day when the church was born. And on that day, the kingdom, the power of God was inherited into people again. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. He said, they will dream dreams, they will have visions. So now we're in this kingdom because God wants to do this from the inside out. He's gonna return, he's gonna meet those in the air. And the people that have not chose to actually become born again are gonna perish, they're gonna tremble before him. But we, the Bible says, when we see him, we will be like him, amen? So God is gonna instantaneously, instantaneously do something to us that are actually living for him. I don't want anyone here to miss out on that, amen? I want you to know for sure that you know that you know that it is not about denominations, it's not about religion, it truly is relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. But you gotta go the way that he's called you to go. So if you have not been baptized or you didn't die to that old life, because I'm gonna be honest with you, repentance is a true change. Repentance is not forgiveness, y'all. Repentance is saying, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to do that no more. I'm following Jesus now. I'm turning away from sin. I'm turning to God. Forgiveness is, God, I need your forgiveness. Yes, we need that. But God is saying, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. It's clearly there in the scripture. It's not just a little symbolic thing. God is saying it is a spiritual reality that you are dying to your whole life. You're rising up. God is saying a covenant is happening between you and Christ. And guess what? The power of sin is being broken off your life. And now the reality of you no longer looking at sin as your master. But Christ really is your master now. And he says, I promise that I will equip you with the Holy Spirit. And so we'll pray. You heard me praying in tongues earlier. That is a part of it. So I know it's not just the gift of tongues because there are different gifts of tongues. But God gives you a prayer language where you can pray in the Spirit and you communicate. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. You know a kingdom by the language it speaks. Amen. You guys heard me speak that before. If you speak Spanish, you know it's because the, the kingdom of Spain conquered. Amen? So now Christ is saying, hey, the heavenly kingdom has conquered. And I give you a new language. I give you other tongues. Jesus said in Mark 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And these are the signs that will follow. So if that is not you, if you have not got... Born again, you want to become born again? Talk to some of our guys. Daniel, we got the two Daniels here. If you want to ask questions about that, let that be so. Now, if you need prayer specifically dealing with healing in your body, we want to pray for you. If you're dealing with, you believe some spiritual torment, you may not even believe it but you're struggling with your dreams, you're dealing with some trauma of your past, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's time to bury that. If you haven't buried that in the waters of baptism, you need to do that as well. Freedom Friday is really freedom forever, hallelujah, for those that are in Christ Jesus. I'm gonna tell you. This is not about show. This is about the realness of what Christ wants to do. Don't be afraid. God doesn't want you to operate in fear. I know that things don't seem like what it actually perceives as, but God wants to do something. 
If you need prayer for some things, just come up front. I'll pray for you. I have the men of God pray for you too. I have Sister May pray for you as well. Specifically. That's fine, Sister, you can come. Any of you guys that are actually born-again, spirit-filled believers, I want you praying in the spirit. I want you guys being on one accord. And I say that in the spirit. This is something that many of us don't understand how the body of Christ works. How we work collectively. And I'm going to come against all distractions in the name of Jesus. There is a war, guys, that's happening right now. There's a war. It's a spirit war. It said the God of this world blinds what? Eyeballs? No, minds. He's blind the minds. He's working in hearts. So one of the things that he does, at least for you guys that are born again, he's trying to get you back. He's trying to get you to roll back to stuff that you dropped off. Be encouraged. But this is something that God wants to raise you guys up to go help out brothers and sisters that you don't even know yet. Do you understand that? So we offer this every month for people, regardless of what walks of life they come from, to either know Christ and know that his freedom is forever. Amen? Amen. We just decided to do it on Fridays. Hallelujah. God knows I'm like that. He said, you, he said, you be serious and then crack a joke in the moment. But I want you guys to know this is about us being authentic in the spirit. All right? So wherever you're at, you worship him. If you do need prayer and you don't want to come forward, we can have somebody come to you as well. But we a small group here. It ain't that big of a deal. You can come forward as well. All right? I'll have Sister May, my wife. I have another brother pray for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, there's some things that the Lord told me some people struggle with, some things that happened to them when they were a kid. I'm not going to say all that, but I'm just going to tell you the Spirit. God wants you to get healing of that, okay? Guys, I pray, with, <laughs> I pray in the Spirit a lot. I'm not playing, all right? So I want to just, like, start calling people out. <laughs> I ain't going to do that. I want you guys to know that God wants your heart into this thing, all right? He's going to straighten some things out in your, in your marriages. That's what the Spirit of God just told me. See, God is in the business of making crooked things straight, amen? That's what he does. So as I'm hearing the Holy Spirit, it's a very, very, very serious message that came across. God is saying there are billions. Hell has enlarged itself, y'all. Count yourself blessed to even have that opportunity to say, you know what? I want to get for real about God. In fact, not only want to get for real, I want to get the help that I need because the body of Christ is dependent on each other. This ain't the individuals of Christ, amen? It's the body of Christ. So we got to get to that place where now we know, okay, God, I'm struggling with some stuff. You may even have some heartache for another family member. And you like to keep just doing the same thing over and over and over. Keep using. And you like, oh, I don't know how long I can do this. This is the Holy Spirit. So that's how some of us are operating right now. You're being like, it's like, it's like a leech. And you're being bled out. And God is saying, stop being bled out. He's going to do some surgery on you guys. I'm going I'm to pray this general prayer for a second. I want you guys to really mean it in the spirit. You guys can lift your hands. Lift your hands and mean it. And I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm precious to you. You're precious to me. Remove all the iniquity and every sin that causes me harm in my life to go right now in the name of Jesus. Set me free from every spirit, from every 
unclean spirit causing torment in my body, in my mind, in my heart. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Baptize me with your love, your power, and a sound mind. I repent. I don't want this life. I want to be with you. Jesus, you died, you rose, and you ascended. You sent your Holy Spirit. You saved me from my sins. Not for me to stay in them. So I ask right now that you purge whatever is not right in my life. All the sin, the pride, depression, ego, lust, be removed right now. Holy Spirit, come right now. Jesus, I need your freedom and I need your healing. Come right now with your fire, fire, fire. Now take three deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. Holy Ghost, touch right now. Holy Ghost, touch him right now. Touch him right now, Holy Ghost. Touch him right now, Holy Ghost. Touch him right now, Holy 